that Western and, I guess, DePaul have been playing today, uh, I would be very surprised if there's enough time for two more points in this game. Even though Western coming in with two quick two quick eliminations right off the rush. Nick Purnell got two kills there right off the rush. He's really good at that. He, he has done that consistently almost every single point for Western. I think that's his strength as a player is that kind of close range. He's very, he's very shifty, very hard to hit. So in that opening rest situation, he's very valuable. All right, got McTickles and Soup holding down the uh, left side. The left side sounds like uh, like Turner and Hooch kind of yeah. crime fighting. A lot of movement on uh, the DePaul side, a lot of shifting back and forth. Um, I'll be curious to see if they decide to start taking a more defensive stance. Uh, oh, and score, we lost scoreboard again. I'll try to get that sorted back out. All right, scoreboard's back up, thank goodness. Yeah, I think it just gets unplugged. Woo, wow. Number 11, Evan Kirking. Yes. In, again, interesting last name. Uh, pretty, pretty good arm on him. Some posturing towards the crowd. McTickles and Soup again. Oh, it looks like McTickles calling himself out there. It's just lonely Soup. Oh, and Soup not able to hang without McTickles, so Soup is out as well, so they will be re rejoined. Rejoined in the afterlife. Yeah, they're the afterlife of the sideline in this situation. Gypsus taking over the left. Oh, wow, big kill for Gypsus on number 30 from WKU. Another kill. Ah. Watching number 17 for DePaul, Lord Corgi, also a guy that can move, uh, does a lot of shifting back and forth on the court. What is your favorite DePaul nickname you've seen thus far? I don't know. In combo, I like McTickles and Soup. It's, it's pretty hard to beat. Yeah, it's like kind of hosts on a kid's show or something. I really love number 55. His nickname is F and Brian. F in, letter F, letter N, Brian. F I like it. Brian. F and Brian. Gypsus Howitzer, Mangle. Uh, uh, Treebeard. Treebeard? Yes. <laughs> nice. Sorrel, uh, Big Bird Sorrel's thirsty for a catch. Uh, I haven't seen him make a throw in a while, but he's really quick to drop the ball, uh, literally, not metaphorically, um, to go for a catch. One of his strengths. Oh, absolutely. I believe we got even numbers on the court right now. Yeah, both teams missing four players. Oh, take that back. You gotta think, yeah, I'm noticing Western slowing down. I think this is the fear. This is the fear we saw during Saginaw. They're starting to get nervous. They're starting to not work together. We're making those throws from way far back. Yeah. Uh, That's a even, actually they have the ball advantage now. They should be pushing the advantage. Yeah, this is gonna be a long 13 minutes for them. Uh, and I'm waiting for someone on Western sideline or someone like uh, Big Bird Searles or the captain to kind of notice and tell them to kind of get their head in the game and start pushing. They've got to get aggressive. Uh, we're slipping back into that passive dodgeball and we can't do that. This is where you need that leadership to step up and say, hey guys, we got to pick it up, try to get some kills, try to get some catches, try to make some stuff happen. Oh. All right, a little bit of aggression there. Nothing came of it, but it's still nice to see. Oh, uh, oh that's, yeah. That is, for Josh win. Yeah, we, they cannot afford to lose him. F and Brian for DePaul up on the right. Mangle on the left. I would 
I'd say that's probably uh, Effin Bryan dropping his ball there, and then Cameron Murray Hicks, number 18 for WKU, coming in immediately to retrieve it. Reminds me kind of of the biggest shift that I've seen since I graduated, which is that ball control has become such a crucial part of the game plan for teams. Great wow. catch right there. Not, still they got, wow! A catch and then two kills all within about 15 seconds. Yeah, just no nameless hero there. Nice catch for Western on, off of Gypsus. But ball control is so important now. That's why you see Western play a lot of defensive-minded stall ball type tactics because they're so concerned with giving the other team ball advantage because now teams are very mindful of the fact that the team that controls the balls has a really good chance to win the game. Nick Johnson going out there on a catch by uh, Effin Bryan. Bryan. All right, 10.54 left in the game. You know, as, you know, as much as I hate to say it as a former player, uh, I, I, at this point, I don't think Western can hope for anything better than a tie, really. Uh, with the time we've got left, uh, there was a shot clock call there on DePaul. Now let's see if Western can capitalize on this. Again, Western has that brick wall advantage behind DePaul. So this is when, if you've got some moment with a cannon, give it all you got and either get the hit or hopefully get the ball back. I think you throw about half, and then I like throwing about another two, keeping about three for yourself, but see if you can at least get a couple people out here. Oh my gosh, an amazing catch again by our nameless DePaul hero. Some panic throws from Western. Whoa! Taylor, making big catches all day for WKU. F and Brian caught, taking his time getting off the court. Gone to the path of least resistance next time. Oh, Big Bird Sorrels. I think he's asking if it bounced off the ball. The ref apparently says so. Nope, he's calling himself out. Big Bird's really good about calling himself out if he feels like there's uh, more of a chance that he was out than in on those questionable calls. A right, little, little bit of gloating, a little bit of taunting. Another shot clock violation. I don't know what is going on with the ball right now. I don't know, I think, they're, I think they're getting a little, it seems like they're kind of playing around now. Yep. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of kind of swaggering and jumping around. So th uh, that's kind of what's got me concerned. If they stop taking it seriously, that would be an opening for Western. Yes. So here we go, let's see if we can have a better turnout here than last time. Nico Nodal is our sleeved hero. Okay. So Nico absolutely lighting it up. Thank you, Calvin, for letting us know about that. He has played absolutely incredibly so far at this point. And a foot shot there. I think that might have been Treebeard. I believe you're right. Number 58 going out for the ball. Tickles back in on the left. Uh, I don't know, soup, the soup, we're, we're missing, we are missing the soup. Howitzer living up to his name with a big old cannon taking out, uh, I couldn't get the number from the WKU player walking across the back, 16, 15 or 16? 15. 15. In DePaul playing kind of a slow, they don't seem to be taking it as seriously as they were before. Kind of slowly walking forward, 
firing off a couple throws and then slowly walking back. Yep. Both teams just kind of seem to seem to be in a little bit of a, a, a haze right now, a fog. As Everett Taylor goes out there on a shot to the foot, that's a big loss for them. He is definitely one of their better catchers. And I think that that's a catch there by Howitzer, number six for DePaul, takes out number 30, Will. Not looking good for Western. No, it is not. Good throw there by Aaron Hedges takes out of the ball player. And soup quick on uh, quick to get back up to the line. Make a throw. Wow, not oh, even a super soup hard takes, throw. Soup takes out Aaron Hedges. And that's it. And Zach Kelsey goes down shortly thereafter. So that puts us seven minutes remaining. DePaul three. Western Kentucky University one.